Okay, and that should do it. I did hit done over here, right? Please tell me I hit done. Uh, go check the thing later. It's going to be drafting number four or number five. Yeah, I was going to say number four or three, but I did update it to number five after I started streaming, but I don't think I hit done before either. Eh, that's only mildly annoying for, like, the VODs and, you know... I'm not partnered or anything, so the VODs get deleted after a few weeks. Alright, so I've been doing all kinds of fun Dominari United stuff over the weekend. Winning boxes, opening boxes, that sort of thing. And, you know, come to Arena and get reminded that, despite how good at Magic I've become over the years, still not quite good enough. Yeah, that was my channel and all of my VODs so I could figure out. Because it's been, what, not quite a week for working on Miracle, but I did have to check and see what number I was on. So we are on return to Ravnica. And... Oh, right, I kind of used the word return... Right, and two plays. Doc. <laughs> there we go. Found it. Found it, everybody. It was right here. So, of course, we immediately put... Oh, no, wait. Abrupt Decay is the three or less. I'm thinking of Assassin's Trophy. So Abrupt Decay, actually not going to make it, most likely. Like, it's very good, you know, being able to destroy problematic permanents without the opponents being in it able to interact with this in most cases uh, and getting them off of the table but the three or less makes it way better in formats like you know legacy where all your opponent's threats are going to be three drops for the most part or less you know barring some sneak attack deck shenanigans so abrupt decay not actually going to make it into our deck Eh, probably not. Reach and trample, no. Uh, trample and makes another 5-5 five, five when it ETBs. No. No. Nope. No. 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 I mean, I guess technically... This guy works because all the defenders will still have defender. Wouldn't have worked like back in the day when that required the wall type in order for it to be considered a defender, but. No, no, no. Nope. Enclave makes a 3 3 token, no. Uh, enters the battlefield, gain three life. That can make a three three. A chromatic lantern. No. No. Nope. Corpse jack. No. No. Yeah, unfortunately, populate caring about creature tokens means that we can't do any of the fun things. Since we want to keep them as enchantments. Uh, nope. No. Good old Deathrite Shaman. I mean, there's nothing stopping us from running him. I think we already have Ooze End. Um, what's its name? Uh, Grave Robber. So, we don't need Deathrite Shaman also. I always run Deathrite Shaman, though, especially with the way I run fetches. Uh, just because you can generate mana from him also fairly consistently. Uh, creature dies. Put X11 one, one counters on target creature you control, where X is the power of the creature that died. Nope. No. 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 
Also no. Still no. Uh, if an insert sorcery card would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. Don't need that. Uh, nope. No. 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 Uh, minus one, minus one. Destroy target enchantment or regenerate each creature you control. Mm, no. I think we care about the decoy. In fact, I don't know why we would care about the decoy. We didn't even wind up running any of the lore creatures in Beamtown Bullies, and Miracle certainly doesn't need anything like that, so... No. 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 Yeah, Gerard's activation. Gerard. Uh, his activation really doesn't... It did more in the bullies than I think it's going to do here. I think we want to be able to sacrifice our creatures more cheaply than that. Not, like, the damage is still nice, but... I think ultimately unnecessary. And the guild mage... Sacrifice a non token creature, make X one ones. A monitor, no. Botleth troll, no. Can't be countered if a spell or ability upon controls would cause you discard, put it into play, no. Uh, no to Mana Bloom, no to Martial Law. Acropolis Regent. Good old Pack Rat. Eh, we don't. If we generated more value out of discarding the cards, Pack Rat might be interesting, because even if they kill it the first time, uh, you make the token copy, and it's equal. Oh no, it's equal to the number of rats you control, not the number of creatures named Pack Rat, so. It wouldn't. The enchantment version wouldn't count itself anymore, since it's not a rat, but the other tokens it makes would, so they'd always be one less than they normally would be. Since the pack rat token wouldn't be an actual rat anymore. Uh, if only it worked the way I wanted it to. Palisade Giant would be awesome in this deck. But it doesn't, so... He's not. Uh, deals combat damage to a player. Put a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token onto the battlefield. Nope. Exile all graveyards. Uh, eight eight vigilance. No, no. Go to rootborn defense. Or hexproof. Chant land. Uh, plus two, plus two, and gains trample. Exile target creature with power five or greater, or make a two-two white knight with vigilance. No. 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 Still no. Also no. Also, also no. Dab wound. A stone fair crocodile gains lifelink. Mm, no. Certainly not for three mana. Which are artifact or enchantment then populate. Cover swindler. Uh, terrace worm. Real kill assassin. Powering Indrick. Rain Caracol. No, no. 
Yeah, my brain was like, wait a minute, did it just have lifelink? Was that all the Caracol was? And that is, in fact, what it was. Defender, reach and regenerate. Uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, gain life equal to its toughness, and three mana tap populate. Judgment, no. Ultimate price, no. We can run Underworld Connections as additional card draw. Yeah, I can add it to the list. I do like Underworld Connections. You know, it's a worse um, Brexian Arena because it ties up one of your lands when you want to use it. And the only real upside is that you can stop drawing the cards if it's killing you. Make a 3-3 three, three centaur and populate. No to volatile rig. Don't need Braska. Don't need any of these. And don't need that. Okay. Alright, so that was Return to Ravnica. Rise of the Eldrazi. Uh, enter the battlefield, target creature gets plus three toughness. No. 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 Nope. Uh, cast trigger, because that's how the Eldrazi work. A no to him and his auras. Mm, destroy target creature with power one or less. Lose his life, no. Peacebreaker, no. No to that. Hmm. The only thing I like about the Blood Rite Invokers, it's a place to put infinite mana that interacts with some of our other things, since it's a non-tap activated ability of a creature. Um, if we're generating the infinite mana from Devoted Druid or the like, um, we can easily dump all of that into him, and he doesn't need it to be a specific color. Um, also, because it's an activated ability on a creature, uh, we can both make the token when it dies if Miracle's out, or we can copy it with the Necrotic Ooze. I don't know, maybe I do want Blood Rite Invoker. Alright, so this is Rise. I do like, you know, cards that don't work in basically any other commander deck that work very well with the strategy that we're trying to do in the one that I'm building. And he might actually be one of those cards. Like, just interacts well with a bunch of the other things that we have going on. Uh, Cadaver Imp, Consume the Meek, Consuming Vapors... Corpse Hatch, Curse of Wizardry, no, no, Rana, Calastria, Blood Chief, is okay. He was very good at killing creatures that, um, don't normally, like, she gets around indestructible and a lot of, you know, damage prevention effects and whatnot. That being said, I don't know that I actually care enough to want to run her. Probably not, but maybe... Um, yeah, I don't think we need Dreamstone Hedron. We'll run Hedron Archive and maybe the Mindstone too. 
I don't think we need the, uh, this thing though, the Dreamstone Hedron. I was about to say Dreamstone Archive, I'm like, that's not the name of it. I am Graveyard for Battlefield, Game for Life. 5 plus 0 until end of turn. Sorry, Gideon. Just not as good as I was hoping you would be. No, no. Uh, I wonder how level up works with Miracle. Like, when you get them to a certain level, do they go back to being creatures? Like, does it become a 2-2 two -two once it's level 2 or 3? Or does it just have the ability? Well, another fun question to go ask the people over at Cranial Insertion, I guess. Uh, prevent all combat damage would be dealt this turn by attacking creatures. No. Um, and all combat damage other creatures would deal this turn. Also no. Uh, no to the Matrix. Uh, would deal damage to you or a creature you control. Prevent one and then prevent two. Oh, no. No to Hellcarver. Ina Umbra, no Inquisition. Uh, Enter the battlefield. You may tap any number of untapped creatures you control and gain two life for each creature. Tap this way. Drag a tree speaker. Like, I'm actually kind of curious now because I would not mind running Drag a tree speaker in the deck as a mana ramp thing. I'm going to add it to the list just in case. We'll have to find out. Yep, yeah, okay. As long as I actually spelled it right. Uh, this one's an anthem. This one makes elephant tokens, but you have to level it up twice before it even makes the first one. Uh, no to that. No to those. Just an aura spell may draw a card. Nope. I uh, don't need Puzzle X Predator. Never one or more creatures attack. Deals damage equal to the number of cre deals damage to those creatures equal to the number of attacking creatures. Uh, activate abilities of creatures your opponents control can't be activated. Hmm. Do I care about Linvala's effect? Like, would I want to be able to stop my opponent from activating their creature abilities? Like, there are some that are very helpful to be able to shut down, but most of the time it comes into play abilities that I run into the actual problems with. Obvi or triggered abilities too. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of creatures that get run in Commander because you want to be able to use their activate ability over and over again. <clears throat> I don't know that it's so hard to dedicate slots to this type of effect though when I'm already trying to cram in the ways I want to win and some of the other things that I'm doing to disrupt opponents. So. Guess we don't need Linvala. No, no, no. That.
I put in the extort one of these, but I don't know that I need the revenant also. I don't even know if I'm going to run the extort one. If I'm being honest. Hmm. Miracle is a 7 drop. We can protect him with not of this world, like tap out to cast him and hold off, you know, like a swords or a path or something. At least one of those. Okay, I will consider it. Oops. That one... No. 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 On a Bulamog. Much, much better in the Aristocrats version of the deck. <laughs> uh, gain seven life. It's put into a graveyard from the battlefield. Draw a card. No. And yeah, I think we have to add Pestilence Demon just as a backup to uh, Thrashing Wumpus, since it is the other living Pestilence creature. It is a lot more expensive because it survives a lot more and has an evasion ability, so it deals a lot more damage to the opponent more consistently. So, both of those things really hurt the Pestilence Demon as a thing that we can use. Fortunately, with the Necrotic Ooze, we just need it in the graveyard. And if it manages to get out while we have Miracle and dies, and we just get the enchantment version of it, that's also fine. Um, I mean, I know we want a low life total to keep Miracle alive, but I think we can do better than a 7 drop for that. Uh, Defender and Flying, no, no, no to the Giant Eldrazi. No, that thing. So the Tajaru Preserver stops our opponents from being able to make us sacrifice things, which is one of the ways to get around Miracle's indestructibility. Uh, if it did at least a little bit more, I might be interested in it. No to that one. No to Old Lamog. No, no, Venge Vine, Wall of Omens, uh, Chariot, no, no, and that guy. Okay. That was Rise of the Eldrazi, our Rivals of Ixalan. Then we get to go into Saviors of Kamigawa, where I will find something I was not expecting, I'm sure, because I've just openly mocked it. I should openly mock all of the sets, so that way they can prove me wrong with their cool card that works in my deck. That I'm actually kind of excited to try out now. Just so that way I can stop scrolling through the whole list going, no, no, no. Right, right, Atsuken Seer, with your ability to add mana and go grab dinosaurs, like, you, you're you great for this deck, right? No. No, you're not. Uh, enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. When it attacks, another, or no, not another, so it could target itself, gets plus X, plus X, where X is the power of the exiled creature card. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, 
Snail Monitor, Captain's Hook, Champion of Dusk, Parish Hatchling, no, 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 no to all of these. There's a battlefield under your control, put a 1 1 counter on this guy. Uh, kills dinosaurs, it damages, gives pirates plus one plus one and death touch. Uh, attacking or blocking creature, no, no. Uh, another creature dies, put a 1 1 counter on. When she dies, get X 1 1s. Again, aristocrats turn her and, like, keep putting counters on her, then sacrifice her, get a whole bunch more things to sacrifice. Uh, no, no, no. I don't think we need, we don't need pirates, we don't need merfolk, and I don't think we need vampires either. Vampire is actually the most likely one to actually be anything relevant that we could go get, and I still don't think so. Nope. Nope. No. 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 Watley. Put a loyalty counter on Watley Radiant Champion for each creature you control. Uh, target creature gets plus X, plus X, or X is the number of creatures you control. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. Nope, sorry, Watley. I don't think so. Uh, nope. Nope. No. 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 Nope. It's the 1-1 one, one token. The token has hexproof. Unfortunately not. Don't care about dinosaur spells. Don't care about vampire lords. Uh, can't attack or block. No. Is that just pacifism? No, it's luminous bonds. The worst pacifism. And that it costs a mana more. And doesn't give you the effects of arrest either. Like the additional effects. Uh, attacks another target dinosaur you control gains flying. Uh, dies create a 1 1. Hmm, no. No, no. Also, no. No to that. And that one. And also that one. It's dealt damage, you get a 1 1. Uh, if you lost life last turn, put a 1-1 counter on Paladin of Atonement. Whenever it dies, you gain life equal to its toughness. Nope. Path to Discovery, Pitiless Plunder, Polyraptor, Pride of Conquerors. Mm. Don't think we need Profane Procession. Radiant Destiny, no. Ravenous Chupacabra, probably not. Reaver Ambush, Exile Target Creature with Power 3 or less. No, no, no. Uh, enters the Battlefield, put a 1 1 counter on another vampire, no. And it's dealt damage, put two 1 1 counters on it. Esperant, no. Slaughter of the Strong, no. Snubhorn Sentry, no. Uh, can't cast instant or sorcery spells during that player's next turn. No. 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 Nope. Right. As vigilance. Oh, as long as we control another dinosaur. Yep. No. Uh, Flash enters the battlefield, gives a merfolk hexproof. No. 
the damage to another dinosaur you control will prevent all but one of that damage. Uh, makes one ones, and then if I have the city's blessing, they are three threes. Uh, Tetsamok, Mortal Sun. Uh, we're not running the Gideon anymore, like any of them. So. Would I actually run the Immortal Sun? Maybe? We can add it to the list at least. Oh, wait, this is Rise still. Alright, Rivals. Son. Mm. So Thrashing Bronodon, we've seen a bunch of other similar creatures with either comes into play abilities or death triggers um, or sacrifice abilities to destroy Various permanent types, especially artifacts and or enchantments. We have the um, acidic slime, definitely. Maybe if I want more, I'll come back to Thrashing Brontodon. I think he might be in just the right spot, like power and toughness wise, to casting cost as opposed to like one of the two mana two twos. That can do similar things, or three mana, two twos, if it's like it comes into playability on them. Uh, just so that way we have more uh, disenchant effects that are recyclable. Like, we can sacrifice him, destroy one of them, and then get the enchantment version of him and get another one. Assuming our commander is out, but... Trapjaw is the one that exiles things until he goes away. Or is in rage. Twilight Prophet. It'd be great if this thing ever, ever had its effect and didn't just eat a removal spell immediately every time. <laughs> Seriously, I have seen. I have played with Twilight Prophet in a bunch of my decks and played against it a lot, and I have seen this thing trigger exactly once. Pretty sure it hit a land, too. Like. Absolutely minimum effect. Um, death touch, flying, alt, bonus hunger. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. If you have the city's blessing, they sacrifice two instead. Oh, half the creatures rounded up instead. Okay, that's a bit better. Still not good enough, most likely, but certainly much better than I thought it was going to be. Unless they only have two creatures, then it's actually worse. And then they then they still only lose one creature. Uh, Wayward Sword Tooth, no. World Shaper and Zatalpa. Okay. Oh, well, that was rivals. So saviors now, I think. Yep. Rivals, Saviors of Kamigawa. Then we get to Scars of Mirrodin, where we should get the ooze, the necrotic ooze that can copy activate abilities of our dead creatures. Uh, Aether Shockwave. Tap all spirits or tap all non spirits. Uh, begin of your upkeep if you have three or more cards in your hand. More If you have more, oh, just more cards. I don't know where I got the number three from. If you have more cards in your hand than each opponent, you may sacrifice a swamp to return it from the graveyard to play. No. Flying Bushido. Uh, tap to deal X damage to target creature with flying, or channel it to deal X damage to each creature with flying. Choose a creature type. Each creature in your graveyard is the chosen creature type. Uh, legendary Landwalk. Beginning of each player's... Upkeep, that player returns a permanent they control to owner's hand unless they pay two life. Cast the spirit or arcane spell, gain life equal to its mana cost. No. Uh, spirit or arcane spell, destroy all permanents with that spell's mana cost. Okay. I 
I mean, you can't change the mana cost. I was trying to think if there's a way to destroy all lands with Celestial Kirin. Uh, because it didn't bother to put non-lands in there. Like, is there a zero-drop artifact spirit somehow, or colorless spirit creature? Because there's not going to be a zero-drop arcane spell. But... It could have been a zero-drop spirit, although... Yeah, so all of the zero drops, there's like the three kobolds, there's an ornithopter, a uh, couple of constructs, but no spirits. Actually, hang on, is there a spirit? The Ugin's thing, oops, from War of the Spark. Is that thing a spirit? I'm really curious if there's a way to kill all permanents with, like, kill all lands with that creature. Not that we're going to run it, but I'm just kind of amused by the concept of it. Uh, Ugin's... I think we have to go full screen for me to see this. Uh, Nexus, Construct... Conjurant, that might be it. What is its creature type? It is a spirit monk. There is actually a... Wait, can X be zero? Uh, enter the battlefield with X counters on if damage... Yep, okay. So, yeah, Ugin's Conjurant with the Kirin would actually destroy all lands. That's mildly amusing to me. Uh, Spirit Arcane Spell, destroy all permanents with that spell's converted mana cost. Okay, then. Yeah, I'm so used to them just putting non-land on there anyway, just to stop random stuff like that from happening. And then I was trying to think, is like, I feel like there is a spirit that you can cast for zero. And as it turns out, there actually is. So that's neat. Um, again, it's not something I want to run. Like, it doesn't do anything in this deck at all to do that. I'm just amused that you can. Uh, oops. Keep, like, you know, itchy trigger finger clicking the right mouse button. Uh, chain creature can't attack or block. Yeah, no, we're not going to bother with something on one creature. Gain one life, or cards, return it to your hand, plus one, plus one until end of turn, and soul shift, there are more cards in hand, gets plus two, plus one, and fear, uh, creatures with flying, can't block creatures without flying, I have more cards, uh, descendant of Kimoro, or Kimoto. It's plus one, plus two, and it's whenever this creature deals combat damage, you gain three life, specifically. Each card in your hand, then remove a counter for each card in target opponent's hand. Gain six life, draw a card, Ebony Owl. Uh, return a white creature you control to owner's hand. Uh, Spear Arcane Spell, top three cards of your library, put all land cards revealed this way into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. And the Swarm, Enduring Ideal, Exile into Darkness, no. Uh, Spear Arcane Spell, Regenerate it. Creature from your graveyard to play. Sacrifice that creature at end of turn. I'm just wondering if we would be interested in an effect like that to get a creature back into play with Miracle out. Like, if it dies before he comes down, this is a relatively cheap spell to reanimate it, but we could also just be running Animate Dead, I guess. And I think I had considered Animate Dead for this deck, since, you know, if they get rid of the aura while we have Miracle, we can get our creature back again. Or if we sacrifice it, we can get it back again, so... Like, we don't need... 
We don't need an effect like this. Um, Okay. Gain two life and channel it to gain four life. Discards two cards. Uh, channel it to make them discard four cards. Each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by one. Pro white, pro black. Uh, draw a card, spear arcane spell, return it to your hand. Uh, the Infernal Chiron, entire player reveals their hand and discards all cards with that spell's converted mana cost. Uh, plus X, plus X. Bushido 2, Angel 4 life. Uh, Kagemaro, first to suffer, can give minus X, minus X. I don't think we really care. This clutches, 4-1 with Soul Shift. Uh, sacrifice Kami of Tended Gardens unless you pay green. No. Any snakes you control can't be the target of spells or abilities. Deals combat damage to a creature tap and it doesn't untap. Uh, gives all artifacts an upkeep cost of one. Uh, comes into play. Target player discards a card. Uh, deals damage to itself equal to its power. Front the next three damage will be dealt to target creature this turn. Play this ability only if you can only if you have more cards in your hand than each opponent. Uh comes into play, you may tap target creature. Uh Lore Weaver gets plus zero plus X, where X is the number of cards in your hand. Uh four more has vigilance. Uh, when it deals damage, you have seven or more, gain seven life. That player sacrifices a creature. No. Bushido one. Maximum hand size reduced by two. Traitor to mortals. First to live. Twice the number of cards in hand. First opponent controls deals damage to you. That player sacrifices a permanent. <sighs> Ichiko Konda. No, I don't think so. Has to deal damage to me, not necessarily my things. So. Yeah, no. I'm considering it because we have like the Karmic Justice and the other one on the list. But I don't really think we need Michiko, even though we could get her to come back in her enchantment form. In theory, so. That would cause our opponents to keep having to sacrifice things when they damage us. Throw in, like, no mercy. Although, if we throw in no mercy, um... I guess we control both triggers, so we'd have to put no mercy on top of the Michiko in order to get them to lose other stuff besides the creatures that damage us anyway. I don't know, that seems like a lot of hoops to jump through get like yo know, and by a lot of hoops to jump through we're casting another creature spell is that even a hoop we're we're, we're doing commander stuff I mean, I'm trying to get to the point where like the opponent is losing a whole lot of permanence just to attack us but that doesn't seem entirely necessary at this point Like, what, what are we actually accomplishing? If we make our opponents have to sacrifice stuff to damage us, um, it's not like, like, I would be more impressed, you know, with things like Erebos' Intervention, because we don't mind our stuff dying as much in this deck. 
So, you know, Grave Pact effects seem better for getting rid of our opponent's stuff uh, than having them rely on dealing us damage. The upside to that, though, is damaging us is something we kind of want to have happen anyway to keep Miracle within range of indestructibility. But if we make it so that they're punished too hard for attacking us, then they just won't attack us, and then we won't get to do the cool thing, so... We'll have to lower our life total on our own. Uh, don't have enough legendaries for uh, Reiki. Although Reiki gets kind of interesting if we had more legendaries, because then we would gain access to the new guy from Dominara United, who makes 2-2 uh, two -two zombie tokens that are otherwise copies of legendary creatures I control that died, so... That would be kind of interesting. And the tokens themselves are not, like, they're copies of the legend, except that they're 2-2 two -two zombies, and they're not legendary. So we could get both the legendary, t uh, we could get the legendary enchantment from Miracle and the non-legendary zombie token from the other guy. Um, he's play, though, as opposed to comes into play, so... That kind of falls in the same problematic category that the a lot of the enchantresses have, where I'm not casting the enchantment, so I'm not getting the effect of it. Or, yeah, I'm not getting the extra effect from them. Uh, if only if you have seven. Then comes into play, get a 1-1. One, one. Uh, really care about Seki. Stars like oh, they are being of life's roar. Uh, all creatures able to block it do so, and channel it. All creatures able to block target creature do so. First strike, channel it to get first strike. So there should be a Sheenan of oh, no, there's not one for black. That's just rude. Uh, begin of your upkeep, return a black creature you control to owner's hand, and two mana to regenerate this thing. Uh, make a 1-1, one, one, and this has splice. 5-4 and bounces a green creature. I control each turn. Vigilance and soul shift. And wine of blood and iron. Nope. So, literally nothing from Saviors. I think that's the first time I've ever been mean to a set, where it's just like, yeah, we're not going to find anything here, and then we and then we actually didn't. Like, I feel like every time I do that, we find some card that I've forgotten about that's actually kind of okay, or at least worth considering. We can go ahead and close out the Ugin's Conjuring over there. Uh, prevent the next one damage, or prevent the next two damage to an artifact creature. Uh, reach, enters the battlefield, destroy target equipment, 6-5, gentum armor, asceticism. Uh, creatures you control can't be the target of spells or abilities, and you can pay two to regenerate the creature. The two to regenerate doesn't matter as much, since Miracle should be indestructible most of the time anyway. And a bunch of the destroy effects will still get around that, that get run. That are already getting around asceticism. It is a thing that I can cast ahead of time though, and then Miracle would just have... Um, yeah, he would have Hexproof. It is Hexproof, not um, Shroud. All right, fine. Let's go to Scars. We'll consider it at least. The S is first, yeah. Uh, Metalcraft, no. Yeah, I doubt I'm gonna be interested in any of the Metalcraft creatures. Um. You know, even if we run artifact creatures, them dying will remove the artifact type when Miracle brings them back, so we wouldn't even be able to keep a lots of artifacts in play that way. Excuse me. White Mamba, no. 
graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses two life. Yeah, we don't have any, like, real Counters Matters cards that Proliferate is going to do anything. Don't want anything with Infect. Uh, I hope we don't get too many cool Legends with Infect, especially if we're not going to change the rules. I don't need any more, like, Skittles variants out there running around. Skittles himself is already kind of a miserable thing. No. 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 Uh, nope. I mean, she would spare all of our token enchantments, but still, no. Though I guess we do have doubling season. You know, just drop Elspeth, immediately alter. Um, hopefully Miracle's indestructible. We get token enchantments of all of our creatures that die, and we don't lose any of the token enchantments that we already had. Uh, we will lose doubling season in that scenario, though, but... Eh... I guess she's actually worth considering as a Navendral's disc. Elfing slag worm blocks or becomes blocked by a creature. Destroy that creature. You gain life equal to its toughness. No. No. There's exsanguinate. Yeah. Zori, no. Archers, no. What is it? Brigade, no. No. Uh, choose two target creatures, tap those creatures, then unattach all equipment from them. Back it to put a minus one, minus one counter on a creature. Genesis wave, Geth of the Vault. All of these. Uh, no. She makes cats based on the equipment on her. Gain to life. No. Again, don't think I need to hate on opponents, you know, regular play patterns as much. Also, I want to be able to search my deck and not have to pay the extra two, so... Like, I'm already running basically every tutor that fits in my colors, so... Yeah. No to all of these cards. Uh, draw two cards, lose two life, no. Opal, near Battle Sphere, Galvanizer. Copy, that's near Propagator, Reservoir. All of these. Graveyard, you may put a minus one, minus one counter target creature. Alright, there's Necrotic Ooze. So we're gonna add that to the list since it interacts with. A bunch of the other things that I want. Oops. Necrotic ooze, not just necrotic. Um, 
So yeah, so the ooze has all activated abilities of all creature cards in all graveyards. So with the um, pestilence creature variants, um, the necrotic ooze uh, will have the activated ability. Uh, unlike regular pestilence, uh, if there are no creatures in play, pestilence goes away. Uh, I forget when, if it's like end of turn or if it's at the end of the step or phase. It checks for it, but regardless, once um, there are no creatures in play, Pestilence automatically goes away. So, Necrotic Ooze, like, even if we kill it, as long as we have Miracle out, uh, we get the token copy, and then the token can't ever die, since it has no toughness to its own activated ability, so it becomes a functional Pestilence that can never kill itself by accident, uh, even if it did wipe all the other creatures off of the table. Uh, then you combine it with either abilities that, like, activate abilities on creatures that allow the creature to give itself lifelink. Uh, so when the Necrotic Ooze activates, it will give itself lifelink. Like, even if it says, like, this creature gains it until end of turn and spells out the creature's name, uh, the way effects like this work is that when this is the source of the ability, you treat it as though its name were the appropriate name. Or as though the name in the text box were the appropriate name. So, you know, if it's like Cleric of whatever gains lifelink until end of turn and Necrotic Ooze activates that ability, you treat it as though Necrotic Ooze gains lifelink until end of turn. Like, that's actually how the rules work. So, we can give the Necrotic Ooze lifelink that way. We can also give it Death Touch. And then it doesn't care if it kills itself with Death Touch again, as long as it doesn't kill Miracle. And even if it does kill Miracle, as long as we're going to win with it. Uh, and then the other big thing is if we can give it lifelink or use um, exquisite blood so that we gain life equal to the amount of life that our opponents are losing from all of this. Uh, and we combine it with Carrick who lets us pay two life to replace like the black mana symbol. Basically lets us pay Phyrexian mana for any of our black mana symbols. Uh, means that we can pay two life to activate the pestilence effect. Uh deal one damage to everybody and all of the creatures so even if we're only gaining life equal to the players I'm paying three to activate it and as long as I have three opponents that's neutral now uh, to keep activating it also we can keep activating it in response before we let the damage start resolving if we need to get under 20 and stay under 20 for miracle so basically, we put a whole bunch of triggers on the stack uh, by paying two life for each one of them. So that way, we're below 20, like below 20 plus the amount of life we're about to gain from each resolving trigger. And we just kind of keep doing that, and then Miracle stays indestructible the entire time, and we just get to kill all of our opponents. Uh, and because Miracle isn't dying if Carrick dies without getting exiled. Uh, he just becomes a token and allows us to keep going. So, once we actually have that particular setup going, we should just be able to go infinite and kill our opponents regardless. But that is uh, one of the things that I want to be able to do with this deck. So, Necrotic Ooze gives us another way besides having the actual Pestilence creatures in play. Or if we cast them and they die before we get Miracle down or Miracle wanders off and then they die, uh, the Necrotic Ooze gives us another uh, card we can top deck or tutor for that will let us do the entire combo still. <clears throat> so that's why I'm super interested in uh, Necrotic Ooze. If we were doing Aristocrats build, Nim Death Mantle. This is one of the silliest cards for Aristocrat style decks. So... How this works is you play any creature that makes token creatures in multiples. It has to be a creature naturally, and it has to make multiple token creatures. If you're doing it with um, Ashnod's Altar, uh, you only need it to make um, one token creature to be able to go infinite. Ashnod's Altar lets you sacrifice a creature for two colorless mana. Uh, and then you just need a death trigger going on, or you need it to make three or more creatures in order to go infinite, where you just generate infinite uh, token creatures from the effect. Uh, with 
the other one, the Phyrexian Altar, because it gives you one mana of a specific color. Uh, you need to make at least three creatures and have a death trigger to go infinite, or f uh, four or more creatures in order to go infinite while actually netting a creature each time. So you sacrifice uh, the tokens for colorless mana, um, or for the colored mana from Phyrexian Altar, and then you sacrifice the main creature, and if you didn't need... If you got four mana before you were done sacrificing the tokens plus the main guy, then you can just leave the one token in play, and then you just loop that. Like, Death Mantle just keeps bringing it back for four mana, and reattaching the Death Mantle to it, so now it's equipped, so now when it dies, you just spend the mana, and that just keeps happening forever. So, Nim Death Mantle is one of my favorite things to go infinite because I'm usually with, like, sacrifice outlets because I'm usually running Ashnod's altar and almost always Phyrexian altar also, so... So that is the easiest way to generate an infinite number of death triggers, I feel like, with any Aristocrats build. But there are certainly others and other things that generate enough value. But like I said, the Aristocrats decks, they don't need... An effect like Miracle, they have all of this stuff. So while we could build a really cool Aristocrats deck with Miracle, I would much rather build this weird thing that we're working on right now where Miracle cares more they turn them into enchantments than that they so that they're no longer creatures and get freed up from certain um, being creature based restrictions on what they can and can't do. Nope. Nope. No. I was going to say, you can't pay life then, can you? And the answer is spelled out in his reminder text that no, no, you cannot pay life. So, one of my major plans with this deck kind of falls apart if you run Platinum Empyrean, so... Platinum Empyrean will not make it into the deck. Uh, discards a card. The land was discarded this way. Return this thing to owner's hand. Uh, 5-3. Haste, trample, infect. Ratchet bomb. Uh, enters the battlefield. Return target artifact from your graveyard to your hand and gain life equal to that artifact's casting cost. Mm, 7 mana, 6-4. No. No. Book existence, no. Can't run that one. Sacrifice a return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Nope. <coughs> uh, plus one, plus one, and gains first strike. No semblance anvil. Yeah, no. Reducing the casting cost of our creatures by two is certainly something I'm interested in, but not for the card disadvantage that we're getting. Uh, in case you were wondering, this is Skittles. Uh, Skier Theorix, the Blight Dragon. Yeah, he is... He is not fun to play against as a commander, unless you really like the con how Infect works, like the concept of Infect and how it works in Commander. I am not a fan. Like, I genuinely believe... Um, it needed to at least be raised to 20 as a win con. Uh, dealing quad damage to your opponent by hitting them with an infect creature just seems way too over the top. Um, and Skittles is currently the only legendary creature that has infect itself. So, um, he is the one card you can run as the commander for it if you want to have your commander have infect naturally. Uh, so yeah, I really don't want to see more infect commanders. If I'm being completely honest, I do not like that mechanic uh, as it works in commander. Um, yes, it's a legitimate strategy, and I'm not going to stop you from playing that, but if you're going to play Skittles, I'm going to play whatever the most broken degenerate commander I have on me is at the time, because... That's when you play Skittles, I feel like that's the kind of game you're trying to have. Even if your Skittles deck is not particularly good. 
Like the the effect itself is one one of my one of my few. Yeah, I don't like this, and I need to hate it out of the group. If you're going to insist on playing it, or at least you know if you if it's good enough and it's killing me anyway, then I desperately need to run my best decks just to have a fighting chance against him. <clears throat> yeah, I haven't played against Skittles that much. I did do, like, a... Not, like, a hugely competitive Commander tournament, but we did do a heads-up Commander tournament at one of the places I played at um, one time, and I brought it in because it's my infinite turn combo deck, and I did have to play against Skittles, and I believe I did lose to him eventually, like, I om I could not quite set up the combo, and they managed to disrupt, like, the recursion pieces long enough to get me with Skittles, but it was just one of those things, it's like, I don't like the way the, um, Infect works in Commander. Like, the, when you change the life totals, but you don't change how Infect works, um... It gives you a route to victory that's even more ridiculous, unless you're reducing life totals, in which case it's about as ridiculous as the other one. Like, if everybody started at 10 life, then poison doesn't really do anything uh, other than get around life gain. But if you start at, you know, 30 life, 40 life, anything above 20, uh, it makes it more of a thing than it already is. Like, right now, Infect is effectively double strike when it deals damage to the opponent for how it interacts with the life total versus winning the game. Like, if Skittles deals 4 damage to you and it comes off of your life total, then you go down to 16. But if he deals, you know, 4 Infect to you, he only has to hit you 2 more times and you're dead. And, and he's overkilled you at that point by 2 whole poison counters. So, yeah. Definitely my least favorite uh, thing that with the way it interacts with Commander specifically. Like, there's a lot of dumb things you can be doing in Commander, but Skittles always feels like he's. Like, it's not cheating so much as it is. I'm going to ignore the other weird combo decks that can kill you very quickly and end the game, but at the same time, I'm not going to play fair either. That's very weird. It's like, like Skittles is less intense than most combo decks in Commander, but more obnoxious than most uh, heavy creature mid-range decks. So it's like he fits more into the combo kill thing than he does, you know, a normal, I'm going to play creatures and attack and block and that's how the game is going to go type of thing. Like, he feels like he has way more inevitability than those decks tend to have, but he also feels like he's not as degenerate as actual combo decks that are just going to, oh, I'm going to exile my entire deck and play Oracle now. Like, that seems worse than Skittles, but at the same time, he feels so much... Like, when you're trying to play a game of we're going to deal damage to each other, he feels like he's cheating. When we're going to play I'm just going to kill you if I ever do my cool thing, uh, then he feels worse than that, too. It's like he's not even in a good spot as far as the broken degenerate commanders. He's just a feel-bad when you die to him trying to play, like, interactive games and is worse than the other non-interactive games you can be making in Commander? I don't know. In fact, always felt bad to me in Commander. <clears throat> like, I never liked using it. I think the worst part was I had a deck that... Uh, so I have Volrath built, like the uh, Bug Sultai uh, Volrath. And there is a 4-mana 1-4 flyer in part of the Scars block. I think it's from New Phyrexia or something. Um, that proliferates for four mana, which is great. I want to be able to add, you know, like more counters to everything very quickly, and having every usable mana sink proliferate card is great. <clears throat> but it's a four mana one four flyer with infect. And what am I supposed like? Do I not ever attack anybody with it? 
you know, do I not want to win the game that way? Because as soon as you hit somebody with that, it all of those proliferate things that were already in the deck anyway to make use of all the counters that are going around in that deck, all of a sudden that also becomes, oh, by the way, this player's just dead. And that feels bad. I don't like that. So I wound up not running it, even though the rest of the card is exactly the type of thing that deck was looking for, and it makes me feel sad, because I don't want to win... I don't want to have to play that deck against decks that can deal with that. Like, it's not built to fight decks like that. Like, if you're going to combo kill me, you're probably going to win against the Volrath deck. Like, I don't have enough stuff in there. If you are just going to play big, dumb, cool creatures and eventually put together, like, five cards that generate huge amounts of value, um, that deck I can pull apart with Volrath. But I don't want to land the infect creature, the one infect creature in the deck poke one player with it, and then randomly kill them, like, ten turns later off of different proliferate effects after the Drake is dead. Like, that doesn't feel good to me. So I would have liked that card a lot more if it was just a proliferate card and not... didn't have Infect itself. So, yeah. Oh, sorry, I just don't like Infect in Commander. Like, it never feels good, or it's just irrelevant, like, it's either the most obnoxious thing, or it didn't matter, one or the other, and, like, that that one, it just doesn't play well, as far as I'm concerned. Again, if you have, you know, an Infect deck, and the other players at the table are okay with it, like, don't let me rain on your parade or anything, any more than you were going to let me up until this point, like, you know, you just ignore my angry old man yells at cloud moment. <clears throat> um, but yeah, in fact, is my least favorite thing, and it has me, you know, whereas normally I'm, like, super excited for a new magic set, and super excited for, like, building up a story with characters that I know, and, you know, a villain that's, like, an actual threat to all of the uh, party involved. Yeah, Phyrexia is really good for that. Unfortunately, there's almost no way we're not getting Infect back. Like, we ha if we hadn't gotten random cards with poison counters on them in the past couple years, maybe, you know, fingers crossed that just because Rosewater has this massive hard-on for them that, you know, we're not, like, somebody else's talking him down from that ledge, but I have to believe we're just going to see Infect. Like, he loves that mechanic way too much, and <clears throat> it, it is the it is my number one wish he would get over that. By the reverse of that, um, I really wish we could have Tribal back, but done correctly. And he hates Tribal, and Tribal did really poorly because they did a terrible job with it in, um, I'm thinking Morning Tide, Lorwyn, Lorwyn Morning Tide uh, was where Tribal was a thing. Like, they did such a terrible job with Tribal um, that it failed spectacularly when it came out, despite the fact that everybody loves actual, like, not the mechanic or the card type tribal, but, like, the deck archetype tribal, and they keep doing that, you know, we had, like, um, Ixalan, where we had, like, Dinosaur Matters cards, and Pirate Matters cards, and Vampires, and whatnot, like, we had a whole bunch of card type Matters cards, and we always get card type Matters cards, like, Dominaria just gave us, like, a fresh batch of Lords for a lot of, uh, popular, and in some cases, uh, underserved, uh, creature types. So, like, we got a Goblin Lord, but then we also got a Cleric Lord in black, so, you know, kind of a mix and match of some of the best archetypes uh, that already had great cards, and some ones that, you know, don't have a whole lot of support dedicated to them, but have enough that a Lord would be a welcome addition, you know, just to buff up your team and have, like, an extra ability attached to it. Um... The problem with Tribal as a card type is they didn't do anything to a lot of the... Like, they just slapped on creature types. It felt very very much literally like, 
okay, uh, we need cards that interact with goblins, and we have that, so we're going to make this uh, shock, but it's a goblin. How is the shock a goblin? In what way is this card a goblin? It isn't. Like, it is a goblin because it has the word goblin written on the type line. That is the only reason it's a goblin. I feel like if we had not done that, if we had gone more with the... So in order for a card to qualify for tribal and actually feel like a tribal card, as opposed to just writing a card to, like a creature type on a non-creature card, it has to do something positive for that tribe, negative for the other tribes, or... Uh, it has to, or it has to make tokens of that car, of that, uh, creature type. Like, Dragon Fodder should be a Goblin Tribal card, because it makes two 1-1 red Goblin tokens. Um, Fiery Cannonade deals two damage to each non-pirate creature. That should be a Tribal Pirate spell. Um, like, that's the type of thing you need to look for, for Tribal to make sense. Also, it has to actually work. Like, Walk the Plank uh, is destroy target non-Merfolk creature. Flavorfully, because if you throw a Merfolk overboard, that does nothing to him. Uh, never mind the fact that you're killing flyers somehow by throwing them off the edge of the ship. Uh, you can't kill a Merfolk by throwing it in the water. It, it just swims away. So, that should not be a tribal Merfolk, though. Even though it doesn't, it's like... It does something negative to a non Murpho card because it's not it's flavored to be the pirate card, but it's also not a pirate card either because it's not doing anything to help pirates or to punish non pirates. So in that regard, like that's not a tribal card the way I'm setting it up. And I think that's the important thing, is that if tribal makes more sense flavorfully, like if it matters that the card is uh, tribal because it feels connected to the tribe it is a part of, then then you can make cards that interact with the other tribal cards of that creature type, and you can get more things into the set that care about those type of cards. But Tarfire dealing two damage to a creature and having a picture of a goblin throwing the Tarfire on it, that doesn't make it tribal. Like, it's still just shock. And the fact that it's a goblin also is just kind of weird and feels tacked on in order to fill out the um, set, you know, to add more goblins to the as fan of your hand when you look at it. <clears throat> so, yeah. In fact, definitely something I want to get rid of. Tribal something I would definitely like to see come back and done properly. And I feel like those are the two things where Rose Warrior and I are completely flipped on. Like, he loves Tribal and really wants to keep doing it, and he considers uh, or Tribal, wow. He loves Infect and wants to keep doing it, and he wants to see Tribal never, ever, ever come back, ever. Despite the fact that it's not actually a, like, in much the same way that they did a terrible job with Chroma, but then they managed to do um, uh, Devotion, and it was great. Like, maybe not great, but it's certainly a fun mechanic. Like, people tend to react positively to uh, um, Devotion cards more so than they ever did to Chroma. So, but they're functionally very similar. Like, Chroma also cares about your devotion to a color but sometimes it cares about it in zones other than in play. Like, there's like a black creature that's power and toughness is equal to your devotion to black on cards in your graveyard um, type of thing. So, you know, you play like a dark ritual and now there's like one black mana symbol in the spells in your graveyard casting cost-wise, so it gets a bone, like, it gives it another plus one, plus one, uh, that sort of thing. So, yeah, there were a bunch of cards like that. So I feel like if they just tweaked Tribal and actually put it in sets where it worked, they would get a little bit more out of the mechanic, and it would be, like, a pleasant addition. Like, at that point, it needs to be evergreen and kind of used where it makes sense. 
And I think it makes the most sense on things like token makers, especially. Having the sorcery that makes 2-1-1 goblins not be a goblin card that my goblins can reduce the casting cost of or let me play for free or, is it, you know, it's a it makes goblins. How is this not a goblin card when you have a mechanic in magic that can make it one um, type of thing? So, you know, like your war chief can make it cheaper and whatnot. I just like to see Goblin, like, I would like to see Tribal come back for things like that and let us have more cards that uh, have the creature types and can interact with spells that care when we cast a creature of that type, you know, or, you know, have a spell that hurts other um, tribes and leaves our tribe specifically out of it feels like a card that is supposed to be part of that tribe at that point. I would like to see that more. So. But we'll, we probably won't because Rosewater hates it. And like I said, we'll see more Infect because he loves it. Even though I, th I think Infect is like the most polarizing mechanic that he loves and insists on putting on cards. Uh, all of the other mechanics that he loves that other people hate have kind of gone... Like, he's like, okay, I thought it was going to be great, and I really liked it, but everybody else hated it, so, you know, it gets put to the side, and maybe it gets retooled, like, you know, Chroma gets put to the side, becomes Devotion, other things get put to the side, and we wind up never seeing them again, or we see them on, like, a card in, like, a Modern Horizons type set, or a, you know, Commander Legends set, where you can print a card that has the old mechanic on it. Uh, just as a one of in the set, and it doesn't really do anything. Like it doesn't negatively impact standard or anything. And vintage and legacy and commander can all handle them, and modern too for the ones that show up in modern. <clears> hmm. <throat> Sunblast Angel uh, becomes interesting when we can sacrifice it and bring it back as a token. Um, aside from that, not particularly good, so. Yeah, the ability to effectively give it flash, even if it's an on-board type thing, just means that opponents have to be leery of attacking us with too much stuff, you know, lest the angel become annoyed and suddenly explode and kill them real quick. That being said, and it's like more efficiently costed than a bunch of other similar effects, but I still don't think we quite need it. Sorry, target artifact or enchantment. So yeah, there's another one of those type of cards. And there's plenty for specifically artifacts and enchantments and almost none for, you know, a wider variety of uh, permanent types. Um... You know, either we're getting, like, the 5-mana 2-2 two -two Death Touch and the Acid Ooze, or we're getting, like, the 8-mana Woodfall Primus, like, for cards that can blow up all of the different card types on coming into play or dying or sacrificing themselves to do it. Uh, can force a creature to block it, and it has Infect. Gains Pro Artifacts and Draw a Card. Oh, artifacts and infect. Artifact creatures get plus two, plus two. Sacrifice a creature to proliferate. No. All the trigons. No. Double strike and lifelink. No. No, no. No, don't really need Venser's Journal. A uh, creature you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield. You may pay X to gain X. No. Uh, whenever an artifact is put into an opponent's graveyard from the battlefield, you may draw a card. Uh, replica, no. Also, it's red. Like, shouldn't they be even given that one the time of day? Target creature gains indestructible this turn. Yep, keep accidentally right-clicking again. Uh, control deals damage equal to its power to target creature with flying. So, no. And good old worm coil engine. 
Hey, so that was Scars, and it is currently 1.30, so time to start getting ready for work. So we made it through a couple sets, and I got to rant a little bit. I think I've had that rant before on stream, back when we were working on Beamtown Bullies, probably either during Lorwyn or one of the Scars of Mirrodin sets. But yeah, I just have never liked Infect in Commander because of the way it works, and I've never really been a huge fan of Infect to begin with. Like, I hate it a lot less in 60-card constructed formats or even 40-card, you know, limited formats, where it's just another thing uh, that you can play with. But it feels so much worse in, um, non -con in like you know, commander decks and things where you start with a much higher life total. The fact that the infect doesn't change what number you need to hit in order to kill a player is just kind of very disappointing. So... <clears throat> so yeah, I just do not care for infect at all. And by the flip side of that, I really do think that we lost... Um, some interesting card designs and interactions by just deciding that um, uh, Tribal was a failure and not trying to fix it instead. Because I think it's actually a pretty easy fix. If you focus on making the cards make sense in the tribe rather than just tacking on creature types, which is what they did. They, Like I said, Tarfire is a goblin for reasons, you know, only because the set needed a uh, removal spell that you know positively interacted with cards that cared about goblin spells being cast or getting back goblin cards from the graveyard, that sort of thing. Um, so while that is why they did it, I feel like they kind of missed what would make Tribal interesting and worth keeping around, is that you want it to make sense and to matter that it is the card type at the same time, like, if you say that this is a goblin card and there's nothing about it that's a goblin card other than that you said it is and have a picture of a goblin on it, um, for a spell, like an instant or a sorcery or an enchantment or something, then that doesn't work. Like, the players just kind of forget that it's a goblin until it becomes relevant and they need to remember that it's a goblin all of the time in order for them to get, like, the full advantage of their spells and everything. Yeah, it mattered more that Tarfire was a goblin because Tarmogoyf needed a tribal spell uh, and extended at the time to get his extra point of damage uh, through each turn. Uh, rather than mattering that uh, it was a goblin to goblin decks most of the time. Except in Limited, where, you know, you have, like, a spell that brings a goblin from your graveyard back to your hand, and you can buy back a burn spell instead of a creature. That's kind of cool and everything, but it really needed to be a goblin, you know, in some meaningful way other than just saying card-type goblin on it. <clears throat> but anyway, that's my rant about both of those, and... I need to start getting ready for work, so I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, and have a good rest of your day.